Hey guys, it's Anthony. Welcome back to the channel. In today's video, we're going to talk about where the market went this past week, where we think the market's going this coming week. And if you're looking to become a consistently profitable trader, definitely hit that subscribe button. I personally trade ES and NASDAQ futures, so if you trade that, you'll definitely want to subscribe. It's taken me just over two years to become consistently profitable. Lots of trial and error, lots of lessons learned, lots of pain, but over time, I became more consistent, and I believe that you will as well if you're not already. So without further ado, let's dive into the charts. We're taking a look at NASDAQ on the daily chart. Last video I said in the update that I was in a long at uh, 14,874. This exact price we're at right now. Um, I'm break even on the long and my stop was below the lows on uh, Thursday, June 8th, which was at 14,620. And you might be saying, Anthony, you said that that was your stop. Why aren't you stopped out? Uh, it was because intraday I waited for the daily bar to close and once we wicked below and uh, failed to close below, I didn't close a trade, I waited for the daily bar to close. Honestly, that's as far as I thought we would go. My ultimate bottom for this correction was between 14,600 and 14,300 and we went a little below 14,600 so it's possible that the correction is actually completely done and we start trending back up from here to highs by the end of the year. However, I know October is volatile, so I'm still sticking with my plan. I basically am expecting a fib retracement now, so we're gonna stay on the four hour chart here. I just have some levels drawn out and a fib retracement from the sell off down. And first target, obviously I'm expecting 50% retracement to 15,155. I think we'll get there in the next week or so. Uh, and then the question is, do we roll over from there and take out these lows one more time, drop to 14,500 to 14,300 at some point in October, and then go up from there? That's basically what I'm leaning towards. So essentially, I think you know we could chop around, but then uh, early October, get to that 15,150, and then basically chop down, and at some point at, by mid-October, get down to about 14,400 or so. And then from here, I'm just expecting us to rally back up and get to above the highs we already took out. So I'm talking above 16,300 at some point by the end of this year. That's my yearly target. I'm honestly expecting about 16,600 to 17,000 on the NASDAQ by the end of the year. Uh, that's just based on a, a few things, but I think we'll get there and then next year run into some issues with the recession. So I'm in the long and again, if we close below the 14,000, well, if we close below this low where my mouse is at 14,600, then on a, on a daily basis, then I'm going to be forced to close out the position and get back in along after we get a bullish market structure shift. So let me just get rid of these lines I drew and let's talk about where we're currently at. So let's drop down to the one hour chart and we'll basically see we were trending lower, 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 uh, pushed up and just wicked above basically saying hey we're in a bullish market structure shift on the one hour because we were making lower highs and lower lows but then we had a explosive push up where we broke above these highs on the one hour chart now personally i don't really listen to this i like to see a more convincing close above at least these levels but then I would not be very confident because this is a pretty strong sell bar. So I would like a one hour close above this candle. Even a wick above this candle is okay, but if we get a one hour close above this candle, personally, that would do it for me saying, hey, we're in a bullish market structure shift on the one hour, and now look for longs on the one hour time frame. And we did that today. So you see the 11 a.m., close above. So I'm on the one hour, it's safe to assume we're going to be start making higher highs and higher lows on the one hour chart. Now this is where market structure can confuse people because this is just the one hour chart, right? So based on market structure, you, you, you just ask yourself, what's the next target? Obviously on one hour, next target is 14,950. Moving on to the four hour chart, it's a different story. So basically uh, this is a swing high and this is another swing high. We've just been making lower highs, lower highs, lower highs, and lower highs. Finally, we pushed up, made a higher low, pushed up, made a higher high. So this is a high, this is a higher low, this is a higher high. B very early stages of a bullish market structure on the far. This isn't convincing for me. I would like to see a four hour candle close above 14,958. After seeing a four hour candle close above 14,958, that's when I would have, be more confident on the four hour chart that we're bullish and that we'd be targeting 15,030. And then 
there's a lot of open trading here between 15,320 and 15,150. So, you know, if we get above 15,030, it's safe to assume we're going at least halfway through this uh, fair value gap on the four hour chart, which is my TP on this long at uh, 15,240. So that's gonna be my target on this long and we're holding strong. So basically break even on this swing trade and intraday has different strategies. So let's move on to the daily chart and the weekly chart. On the daily chart, is, is this bullish? No, not whatsoever, right? If you just look, we've been going down, we started to push up, then we sold off. Clearly, this is high, and realistically, this is the last swing high. So it's gonna take a lot on the daily chart to really be bullish, because I would personally need to be about 15,700 on a daily close to be confident that we're in a bullish market structure on the daily chart. Obviously, beginning stages of a bullish market structure would be when we close above this area here, when we close above 14,970 on a daily candle, uh, then we can say, okay, maybe we're bullish on the daily because this would be a low, uh, and then this would be a higher high above these highs, and if we sold off and put in a higher low, that would be the long, probably about 14,800, uh, to then target you know, 15,400 or potentially 15,700. So on the daily chart, essentially what we wanna see if we're bullish is we want us to push and close above this 15,000 area. And then on a pullback, we would love to see us hold about 14,830 as a support, and this is a level I have, uh, and then push back up. And then as soon as we closed above this high we made at 15,000, uh, that's when you say, okay, we're bullish. And essentially it's safe to getting along there and target above 15,300. If you wanted to be safe, you could just put your stop below the higher low right here after it happens and then put your TP there. Now let's just finish up on the weekly chart and move on to ES and we'll take a look at the dollar and the VIX. So on the weekly chart with NASDAQ, nothing bullish whatsoever. You have a high, you have a low that broke some lows to the left, you have a lower high and then you have a lower low. You know. The only thing that's potentially bullish is if we close back above this level here on the weekly chart, you could say it was a fake breakout lower and we're closing back above on the weekly, meaning that this was just to trick a lot of bears and now we're gonna push back up and stop people out. Now on to ES, we're gonna start on the weekly chart and similar idea on the, on the weekly chart for ES. However, this is more bullish to me in a sense because we came straight down to support. If you just look where my mouse is, we went to a ton of support on the weekly chart. 4,300 on ES is a lot of support. My lower target for this whole sell-off was uh, 4,280, and we hit 4,280 and we bounced. I actually think that we're not gonna go lower now on ES. I know it's too early to say, uh, but you know, we, based on my targets, my low for ES was 4,280. Um, the low I was looking for on NASDAQ was 14,400 to 14,500. We basically went to 14,500, so you know it's possible that that was low. So on the weekly chart though, obviously extremely bearish, why? Because we were making higher highs, higher lows, we sold off, we closed below the swing low, we pushed up, we made a lower high, and then another lower low. So now we're at a bunch of support to the left. If you think we're in a bull market now, then you would say, hey, clearly we're just gonna start turning back up and target 4,700 on ES. Uh, if you think that the recession is gonna hit now and we're gonna go into the bear market now, then that's a different story. But uh, I believe that we're gonna be bullish until the end of the year and then uh, at some point first quarter of next year is when there'll be some more turmoil from the recession. So weekly bearish. Daily chart, extremely bearish, right? We, we just kind of pushed up into the resistance to the left here. You know, there's nothing, there's no reason to be any longs on ES until we close above 4380. Once we close above 4380, you know, kind of safe to assume this may have been a bottom and we could buy a pullback and target up into 4470 to 4450 before it comes back down to 4280. But again, you know, there's resistance at 4415 and we just hit resistance here at 4350. So nothing much to talk about there. It's just bearish. Uh, the four hour, right? Again, beginning stages of potentially bullish because we're making lower highs, lower lows, lower lower highs, lower lows. 
uh, bottomed and then pushed up, uh, made a higher low for once and a higher high. So we have a low, we have a higher low, and then these bars closed above these bars. So it's the beginning stages of a higher low and higher high. So now, based on that, on the four hour, you would assume the next target is gonna be uh, 4370 and then 4385. Now on the one hour chart, it's probably gonna look better, right? If you just look on the one hour chart, again, this is much more convincing. Why? Because we closed above the highest to the left. Why is this nothing convincing yet until we get above 4366? Because in the one hour chart, we can do that all the time. If you just look to the left here, we we're making lower highs and lower lows, lower highs, lower lows, right? We made a low, pushed up, found resistance to the left, made a higher low, pushed up and closed above the high made here, and then proceeded to roll over. So this is exact, this look right here, remember what this is the exact look right now. Why? Because we made a low, pushed up to resistance, made a higher low, and then closed above these highs. So now, if we don't roll back over right now, safe to assume on the one hour chart, we're likely coming for that 43.70 and 43.85. Now, after all that, let's take a look at the VIX first and then the dollar. So if you look at the VIX on the daily chart, this, in the last video, uh, basically we had wicked right here, the 200 day moving average. I said most of the times in the past, about 80% of the time, we, we wick the 200 day, the VIX, continues to pull back and then the market bottoms right there. That's why I got in the long partially. Well, we had one more day close over um, and the past two days were really aggressive to the downside and that's what would have stopped me out if we closed down there. And then now we get the rollover and because we closed back below the 200, we're, it's, it's extremely likely that we're gonna come down to 1530 on the VIX. So again, another reason to stay bullish because we closed back below the 200. Every time we do that, we likely test the 50. You can just see right here, test the 200. Where do we go next? Right to the 50. So if we got to the 50 here, safe to assume NASDAQ is at, NASDAQ is at 15,100, uh, possibly 15,200 when the VIX gets down to about 15 and a half. And ES is above 4,400 uh, when the VIX gets down there. So this is just obviously on, based on probabilities, but I think that's where we're likely headed. Uh, DXY has been extremely, extremely strong. Uh, question is, are we gonna cool off right now? I don't know, it's just been going straight up. There's no reason to assume that we're gonna really go below 104.6. And we would, in my opinion, need to get down to 104.6 if we wanted a sustained rally. Uh, but if you just look at the weekly chart, it's bearish for NASDAQ because we have just been consistently pushing up. So my eventual target was 109. I think we'll get to 109. Uh, but I'm expecting us to stop some shorts out on ES and NASDAQ now. We've just been so oversold lately that I think we're gonna come into some fair value gaps, fill some trade at least, and then we'll reassess in the next video in the next coming three days or one week and see where we're at and see if we wanna keep our short bias or if we are going to start to hold a long bias. Last thing I wanna cover is the two and 10 year spread, okay? Once this gets back to zero, a recession is triggered. So you can see we've been negative, right? The recession will get triggered until we get back to zero and then there's pain for the stock market. So. The stock market can go up as we uninvert the 10 and two year, but you can go look in the history. Every single time we go negative with the 10 and two year, the recession doesn't hit until we get back above zero. And the stock market has its big sell off and correction after it gets above zero from being negative. So that's just another reason why the market can consistently go up. It's just set an alert at the 0%. Once we close back a little above the 0%, that's when you want to be really cautious being long because that's likely when a recession is going to hit and the market's going to take its 20% correction or 30% correction. That's going to conclude this video. Give this video a thumbs up if you appreciate it. Subscribe for more videos just like this. I post two videos a week, once every Thursday and one every Sunday. So look up for the next video coming out Sunday at 12 p.m. And I'll see you guys in the next video.